Puerto Rican. I got the flag on my truck. And the other guy pulled. I pulled him out of. You pulled him out of the truck. Yeah. I'm asking. I'm trying to. What's up, everybody? On today's video, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 most dangerous cities to record video in. Now, Charlie Booth just dropped a list of the 15 most dangerous cities to record in from his perspective. I love his YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it, it's called Charlie Boo. He's a YouTuber from Detroit who travels across America. And well, I'm sure the things he's seen in those cities are the reason why they're on that list. He's got cities like Miami on there. Now, I've never personally been afraid to record in Miami, but that's his own personal perspective. Perhaps the things he's seen in Miami have been very scary. And I've personally seen several dead bodies on the streets of Miami, but that doesn't mean that for me, it feels the scariest place to record. So on today's video, I'm gonna give you from my personal perspective, the 10 cities that I'm definitely afraid to record in. Now, most of the scariest things that I have seen personally recording video have all been in Florida for the most part, but of course I live in Florida, so it's logical that this is where I've seen the most crap. But there's a few cities in the United States that when I travel there, I'm totally terrified to record in. And on today's video, I'm going to tell you from my personal perspective, which are the most dangerous cities as a YouTuber to have to work in. Just take Fort Myers, Florida. I've been assaulted several times while recording in the city, but because I'm from this area, I'm not afraid of it. So again, personal perspective means that everybody's gonna have a different opinion. Number one is Baltimore, Maryland. If there's a city I dread having to record in, it's Baltimore. Because no matter where you're driving in this city, there's always somebody walking out into the road trying to box you in with vehicles or just doing things that put you on edge. A lot of times it's gonna look like something normal, like somebody walking out into the road or somebody boxing you in with a vehicle, but it can quickly turn into a really scary scary situation and while I've personally never been assaulted in Baltimore there's a lot of things you gotta look out for while driving through the city Baltimore was number three on Charlie Booth's list and I totally agree take this situation here you're just driving in traffic but you have to pay very close attention notice that the red vehicle pulled out in front of me so I'm already on alert then I notice a vehicle with a trailer while this might look like a normal situation it definitely in Baltimore has the potential to turn to something bad notice that there's somebody walking in the middle of the road and that the trailer is stalled out this person could easily entrap you with this trailer and you can get carjacked, robbed, or they could aggressively demand for money. Notice I waited until the red car turned before I actually went and took a turn to the right. I wasn't planning on turning to the right, but because I noticed the situation, I quickly left. And notice that there's people across the street hanging out. This could have easily been a trap. I'm not saying it was, but it very easily had the potential to be a trap. Driving through this American city, you have to be on alert all the time to your surroundings because crime is prevalent and you could easily become a victim. Criminals work in groups and have clever ways to stop your vehicles or entrap you so that they can get their way. And if you're not paying attention and completely alert, you could easily fall for a trap, especially if you have out-of-state tags. Number two is Charlotte, North Carolina. This city is a massive open-air drug market, and Appalachia in western North Carolina has the highest drug overdose death rate in the country. Where North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia meet. This is the opioid death crisis center of America. And Charlotte is the largest city in this area, which means that there's a lot of drug activity. And these drug sale spots are heavily guarded. And anybody who enters these areas recording is easily subject to get chased. Now, we have personally been assaulted several times in the city. We've been there two or three times, and every single time we've been in the city, we've had people chase us down for recording and try to take away our recording equipment because they guard their drug sales spots. It's a very dangerous city to be in, and every single time we've gone to Charlotte to record, we've had a huge problem with people literally chasing us down in traffic and going after us, trying to hurt us for recording. I don't know if other YouTubers have had this experience, but for me personally, I'm just about done with going to Charlotte because every time we go there, we end up getting chased by people and they try to take away our recording equipment. Because of its geographical location, close to the largest epicenter of addiction in the United States, you have to be very careful in Charlotte if you're recording. It really is a city I dread going to and if you're a YouTuber, one city you have to be extra cautious in because there's a lot of drug activity and you could easily 
be a target of random violent acts if you're recording. Even driving through Charlotte is dangerous as a lot of people are intoxicated or they're angry and the addiction makes them just kind of volatile and unpredictable. So I definitely think it's a dangerous city to record in. And these are the things we've caught on camera. Imagine the things we haven't caught on camera in Charlotte. Like one time we stopped behind a building to prepare recording equipment to start doing a video and I had somebody come up to me and box me in. Four guys got out. Luckily, I was able to drive off. That was right before we started recording a video. So yeah, it's a very dangerous city for some reason. It's like a cop episodes from the 80 going through this town. The people out here are literally non-playable characters in a video game. They're just completely wild and unpredictable. Number three is Birmingham, Alabama. The murder rate alone in this city is about four times higher than the city of Chicago. That should just give you an indication of how dangerous this city is. Approaching a very dangerous situation. Simply, there's people on the road. The people on the road will eventually hop into that Escalade and chase us down. We ran away for a few blocks and when we got to the interstate, they stopped us. Four men pulled down their windows pointing machine guns at me and my dad. I had just picked them up from the Birmingham airport. The only thing that saved us is that I also pulled down my windows and in the back seat was my wife who was white. The people who had the guns were black. This city is not only dangerous, it's also extremely racist. And the fact that she was white meant that they couldn't cross the race line and attack a white family. But if we had been black, we would have definitely got killed. They noticed that my father looked Hispanic and I looked Hispanic and we weren't supposed to be in that neighborhood. The only thing that saved us from becoming Swiss cheese inside my SUV was the notion that I had to roll down the back window so they can see that my wife was white and that might have been a deterrent for them not to want to hurt us. White and black issues are very concerning in Alabama and the notion that I had to let them know that there was a white person in the vehicle was probably the only thing that saved our lives. In Birmingham, Alabama, if you make a wrong turn right off the airport exit, you enter a wrong neighborhood, it's no questions asked. They'll turn you into Swiss cheese in a heartbeat. And if you're Asian, Hispanic, or some other minority or person who seems like they shouldn't be in that neighborhood, the police will not investigate. In Birmingham, Alabama, Latinos and Asians are a free kill. Green light, if you make them a victim, the cops will not take the phone calls, will not investigate, may not even show up. And if they show up, they're going to show very little interest in actually making sure that the perpetrator is arrested. It's a very dangerous city to record in, especially if you're not from there. And if you're a minority, don't even try calling the police. It's a waste of time. In fact, many people in Birmingham, Alabama have noted that calling the police only aggravates the situation. In fact, the one thing you should fear in Birmingham more than the criminals is the law enforcement itself, especially if you are a minority. Despite the city being ravaged by crime and violence and murders, law enforcement is more actively focused on trying to find illegals who are working in the city without a driver's license. Because of HB 56, Alabama's unconstitutional immigration law, if you are Asian or Hispanic, even if you have your legal documents or you are a US citizen, law enforcement will still detain you and submit you to some of the most humiliating and disrespectful behavior you could ever imagine. Birmingham, Alabama is definitely a city you should be very careful working in. Number four is Memphis, Tennessee, one of the most dangerous cities to record in the United States. Gang rivalries here and gang disputes make anybody driving into a particular neighborhood who's not from there be a suspicious target. If there's a gang rivalry going on in a particular neighborhood and you show up in a vehicle they don't know with a camera recording, chances are they could act first and ask questions later. Memphis, Tennessee has gone into a crazy gang rivalry and you have to be completely aware of your surroundings at all times while driving through the city. Many of the people are paranoid, they've lost friends, they've lost people, they've had drive-bys, they've had shootings. And if you're going up in there with a camera and they're not familiar with you, it could definitely be a danger. Even some of the attractions you're going to want to see in Memphis 
are neighborhoods that today are pretty much run down and gone to crap. Some parts of the city, particularly at night, are areas you just definitely don't want to go into. Even the locals lock it up early. Whether it's illegal street takeovers, drag racing, or criminal activity, the streets of Memphis or night are very dangerous. And when you introduce a camera into that scenario, it makes you suspicious. You can be certain that the people on the sidelines are going to want to take a closer look at you to make sure that you're not a threat to them. They could think that you're an undercover police officer trying to bust their spot. They could think that you're a rival trying to scope out their neighborhood for a drive-by. Whatever the reason, they definitely don't want cameras in these neighborhoods that are overwhelmed with crime, gang violence, and illegal activity. Number five is Chicago, Illinois. I'll be honest, this city is so dangerous that for the most part, I've only done a few videos here because I don't want to be part of the action. Chicago, Illinois is a city that's divided by neighborhoods that are feuding with each other. And if you roll up in the wrong neighborhood with a camera, it can definitely be taken the wrong way. Some particular neighborhoods are said to have people that stop you and check your vehicle at night to make sure that nobody from another neighborhood enter with bad intentions. It's definitely a dangerous city to record and social media plays a huge role in the crime and violence that take place in the city, which means if they see you with a camera, they might just logically assume that you're part of the messing around and take you out as a target. So questions are not asked, they go straight to the action. And if you have a camera and you're recording in the wrong place in Chicago, they may just logically assume that you're disrespecting their neighborhood by doing so and make you a target. A lot of people in Chicago will actually go live or on Facebook or YouTube or other social media and they'll post up, hey, I'm live in your neighborhood as a sign of disrespect. So if you're caught in one of these neighborhoods recording and they think you're part of the action, they're not going to ask questions. They're going to assume you're disrespecting their hood by recording and you'll easily become a victim. No questions asked. As crazy and incriminating as it sounds, a lot of people actually go live on social media while committing crimes that could land them in prison for life because they're doing it for the online clout. So if somebody sees you and they think you're doing it for the clout, they may think it's their opportunity to get the spotlight by taking you out. Definitely a dangerous city to record in. And again, I have avoided this city for the same reason. Chicago is a diverse city with Hispanic, black, and white neighborhoods, which means that a lot of times your race isn't gonna save you here because everybody can be a criminal, anybody can be involved with a criminal organization, so your race isn't gonna save you in Chicago. Anybody could be part of the mess here. On this particular evening where we went out to dinner in Chicago, they whacked somebody right behind the restaurant where we were eating. It's an action-packed city where somebody's always getting hurt. Lots of violence, and you don't want to be part of it. Number six is Baton Rouge, Louisiana. While New Orleans is a popular tourist destination, nobody goes to Baton Rouge. And if you go to this crime-infected city and think it's some type of photogenic opportunity, you may find out that there's some crazy things going on. Whether you're pulling up to a gas station or just driving around town, somebody sees that camera, you're going to be in a world of trouble. They're going to have questions. They're going to think you're undercover cops. And the city is known for its violence. Recording here is pretty much an odd thing to do because there's not anything pretty. There's nothing really worth recording. Just a lot of criminal activity. And the criminals don't want to be on camera. There's no real telling how the locals may react to your photo opportunity in Baton Rouge. There's a lot of criminal activities going on. I remember on one occasion we were out recording and somebody was doing a burglary at a business while ladies of the night were walking around like if it was normal. With that much criminal activity, recording in this city is dangerous. There's also a lot of drag racing, a lot of street takeovers, and just a lot of crazy people driving around in stolen vehicles crashing into things. There's no telling how much trouble you can get into if you get caught recording in these dangerous Baton Rouge neighborhoods. And just like in Chicago, a lot of people are doing it for social media. So if somebody sees you recording and they think you're trying to show off or disrespect their neighborhood, there's no telling what that could lead to as well. Number seven is Jacksonville, Florida. I cannot begin to tell you how much trouble I have had recording in this city and how many times I've been in dangerous situations simply because we had a camera in the wrong place. We've even had people reach out to us via email threatening us that we're banned from recording in Jacksonville with threats and intimidation 
telling us that if we come back to Jacksonville, we're going to get hurt. And they've gone as far as extorting us or trying to extort us. Of course, we didn't fall for it, and we had to go through a horrific legal battle because somebody was trying to literally extort us, saying that they own the city of Jacksonville, and anybody recording them has to pay them for it. Of course, we didn't fall for it. We weren't intimidated. We're not going to let them extort us, and it became an absolute legal nightmare. On several occasions, we've been chased by cars, and we knew what their intention was if they caught up with us to turn us into Swiss cheese. We've still done some incredible documentaries in Jacksonville, and I haven't let their extortion or intimidation stop me, but it's definitely a city you have to be very careful to record in. Basically, they want to act like they own the city of Jacksonville, and anybody recording there has to pay them to do it. I couldn't begin to tell you how much trouble I've had simply for trying to record videos in Jacksonville, Florida, from getting chased by people, people emailing me threats, as far as even having to delete a few videos because what happened during the video was so graphic and scary that I didn't want to put it on the internet to risk retaliation. On one occasion, somebody ended up on my video and they were somewhere they weren't supposed to be, probably doing something they shouldn't have been doing, and then they wanted to come and threaten me, tell me that I had to delete the video because they were in the video, and apparently somebody got shot over the video because that person was somewhere they weren't supposed to be, and they tried to make it my problem that they got shot because they were somewhere they weren't supposed to be and they showed up on video doing something they weren't supposed to. I don't know what the whole scenario was about, but I got all types of email threats and they really went on a campaign against my channel. Like if it was my fault that their personal life was a mess. So if you're gonna record in the streets of Jackson, which just know that people there have a lot of problems and you don't wanna make their problems your problems or you don't wanna record them doing something supposedly they weren't supposed to be doing or at a place they weren't supposed to be. It really has become a nightmare to record in the city and it hasn't been one event. In fact, I can't think of a trip to Jacksonville that has been uneventful. There's always something with my videos that causes drama. It really is, well, an uncouth city in a lot of ways. And while there's been a lot of progress going on along the beaches, a lot of people are moving to Jacksonville, the city core is crime-ridden. The people there have a lot of problems, and it really is an unpleasant place to work. Despite the city having great food, great beaches, and a lot of great things going for it, if you're going there to record in the city, please believe it's going to come with a complete package of drama, and they're going to try to make their problems your problems because you showed up with a camera. Personally, I don't really care about the drama going on in your city. I just go there to record driving to the city streets. But even that can be a problem for these problematic people in Jacksonville. Number eight is Detroit, Michigan, the most dangerous large city in the United States by murder rate. It's definitely a place you want to be careful in. I have personally not had any issues in Detroit, but I know by its crime analytics that it's definitely a place you need to be alert in. And one of the biggest issues I've had with my Detroit videos has actually been plagiarism. Once it goes on the internet, a lot of people want to steal it. They know it's a dangerous city, so they're afraid to go there and get real footage. And they think they could just steal somebody else's footage. And plagiarism has been a huge problem with a lot of my Detroit videos. It is absolutely a dangerous city as soon as it gets dark and the streets of Detroit at night are a place you definitely don't want to be playing games in. One of the biggest dangers with cities like Detroit and St. Louis that are predominantly African American is that if you're African American, you could be confused for another person in the neighborhood or for somebody in action. I think the fact that I'm white and my wife is white makes us less targets both in St. Louis and in Detroit and while I know they're super dangerous cities for me I don't look like I'm part of the neighborhood action so when I go to these cities despite the fact they're increasingly dangerous places to be people don't seem to mind our presence there and despite Detroit and St. Louis being the most dangerous large cities in the United States I actually enjoy going to both of these cities for their food and their culture even if you're not recording, you have to be absolutely alert to your surroundings in Detroit, Michigan, because it is, again, the most dangerous large city in the United States. A lot of YouTubers like to go inside abandoned buildings, and this is a huge thing on YouTube. A lot of those abandoned buildings are actually used as stash houses for all types of crazy things. You might be going in there to explore or to find something cool for YouTube, and the people there might think you're trying to rob whatever's in that house because, again, they're using them as stash houses. Detroit is right on the U.S.-Canada border, and it is most likely a huge transit point for all types of illegal activities 
going into Canada. Just like Tijuana, Mexico on the U.S.-Mexico border is one of the most dangerous cities in the world. Detroit, Michigan is on the U.S.-Canada border, and that also makes it one of the most dangerous cities in the world. Likely, the culprit of the violence in Detroit is the fact that it's a border city. Detroit's geographical location is likely a culprit to why the city is so dangerous. Many times while driving through the city, as you see here, cars do not stop at red lights. And that is because some of these neighborhoods are so dangerous that if you stop, you're only making yourself a sitting target. As night approaches in the more dangerous neighborhoods, stopping at a red light is probably a bad idea. Notice how the vehicle in front of me made handgun motion at me. I'm not sure if he was telling me that I was following him. He, he might have thought I was following him. He might have noticed my GoPro camera and been concerned that he was blowing the red lights and I would have reported him. I'm not sure what the deal was, but as you can see here, I kept my distance because he did make a handgun hand motion at me. I don't know if he was telling me to back off or he was going to shoot at me. I don't know if he was trying to explain to me that he was blowing the red lights because of potential gunfire. Whatever that situation was about, it's scary that you're driving through Detroit and when you get to these scarier, sketchy neighborhoods at night, you're blowing the red lights. Everybody else is blowing the red lights. It's very freaking dangerous. Maybe he's in a newer luxury vehicle and he's just afraid of getting carjacked. I'm in a newer vehicle with out-of-state tags, of course, so that makes me a target. So anyways, Detroit, Michigan is a dangerous city to record in, and the presence of your camera definitely doesn't make it any safer. Just think, with the murder rate they have in that city, you could easily record somebody on their way to commit a horrible crime, and then your video could become a target of those people. Number nine is Montgomery, Alabama, the Gump, as it's known to the locals, or a crappy, dangerous place, as it's known to everybody else. While living in this city, I was doing coverage on a tornado that ripped through the inner city, and even doing tornado coverage. Crap, we just had a tornado. We're recording tornado damage. It was clear the reason we were there was to record the tornado damage, and even then, it became a problem that we had a camera, and during a live stream covering the tornado as it was happening, we had people plotting to hit us up. So even if you're just covering tornado damage, the crappery in Montgomery will find you and the presence of your camera will become a problem to these uncivilized and uncouth people. Recording in some of these more dangerous neighborhoods in Montgomery was always a problem and we found that the best strategy to record was to conceal the camera the best way we could and drive through the neighborhoods fast because if they see the camera, they're going to follow you. The best strategy you can use is to move very quickly through the city while recording. That way they don't have a chance to spot the camera, investigate you because it's a very dangerous city to record in. And if you're live streaming in Montgomery, it doesn't matter if it's a family picnic or a tornado coverage, somebody's going to come crash the party. They're either going to wait until your live stream's over to then attack you, like happened to me a few times, or they're simply going to do it during the live stream. Whatever the case, the people of Montgomery, Alabama are completely uncivilized and they don't understand that a camera is so you can record videos and upload it to the internet. They think a camera is like a target on your back for them to come kill you. Even if you're just taking the opportunity to see some of the civil rights monuments that are in the city, it probably isn't even worth it. It's just an unphotogenic city that people are uncivilized, and if you go there to record your footage, you're just going to run into all types of crappery. Number 10 is Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I don't like to record in this city for a lot of reasons. For one, it's an open air market. If you're recording criminal activities, you can expect that the criminals may not be happy about showing up on camera while they're doing those types of things. But on top of that, the streets are narrow, they're one way, they're packed and jammed with cars, which means if you were to have an altercation with somebody, you're not going to be able to just drive away like you can in Memphis or Birmingham. If you have a problem with somebody here, you could easily get trapped in traffic. As you guys know, for our YouTube channel, we go into a lot of dangerous situations and we go into places that are very scary, but we always have escape plans and procedures in place in case things go wrong. In the case of Philadelphia, once you turn into one of these narrow one-way streets, all it takes is two vehicles to box you in and you have nowhere to go. If they want to carjack you or whatever the crap they want to do to you, maybe they think your recording equipment is expensive and worth stealing. They see that you have out-of-state tags and you're not from there. 
All that makes it extraordinarily dangerous to go recording on these particular streets. And there it is, guys. Those are my personal top 10 cities that I dread going into to record because I know that there's going to be a problem because of my camera. And I made today's video because I saw Charlie's Booze video. So make sure you check out his list. He's definitely more experienced than I am, and he's been to a lot more places than I have across America. His list is also interesting, and I'm sure he's got his reasons why those cities he put on his list. For example, he's got Miami, Florida on the list. Shocking to me because I've never had a problem in Miami. I've seen people laid out on the road in Miami after violence, but I wasn't part of it. I knew my camera had nothing to do with it, so it didn't bother me. But I'm sure he's got his reasons for putting it on there. Although, to be fair, Miami is one of the lowest murder rate large cities in the country, so it doesn't seem to me from a respectful point of view there's a reason to put Miami on that list, but hey, it's his, it's his video, it's his list. He has all the right to do it, and he gave me the idea for today's video since when I saw his video as another creator, I was like, hey, yeah, I could tell you a story or two about places I've been to, but every single creator's opinion is going to be based off of their personal experiences, and you can't that, you just can't knock that from anyone. He also had New Orleans on there. New Orleans is, in fact, a very dangerous city, but it's also a city that, just like Miami, sees a lot of tourism. And when a city has a lot of tourism, if you're smart and clever, you can just fit in. You can just say, hey, man, I'm just a tourist. You know, I'm good, whatever. It's those situations like where you find yourself in a Charlotte where it doesn't matter what the crap you're doing, they're going to come get you because they saw the camera. Those are the types of cities I don't like to record in. After all, I'm not doing anything illegal. I'm not doing anything I'm not supposed to do. I'm just doing my job as a YouTube creator. So why should there be a problem with me doing my job? He also included, included Brooklyn, New York, which I thought was kind of interesting. I know it's, again, a compact city with a lot of things going on. And again, he may have seen things in Brooklyn that I may have not seen yet in my limited experience there. I was personally impressed with Brooklyn. I thought it was like a better version of Philadelphia. Like, here's Philadelphia. It's completely run down and gone to crap. Here's Brooklyn. It looks like Philadelphia, but it's not gone to crap. But again, every traveler will experience different things in their lifetime and their experiences that are going to shape the way they view a city. Once you go to a city like three or four times and every time you go there, something bad happens charlotte north carolina it's gonna be hard for me to ever go back to that city and feel like it's safe and miami florida is a place that for a lot of people has been that because you can go to miami something crazy could happen to you and it's forever going to mark the way you see that city you know i would actually move to miami florida so it caught me off guard that charlie boo would say that miami florida belongs on that list i would dream about being able to live in miami florida but then again i'm cuban and a lot of times a lot of the things that are happening in miami that are bad aren't happening to the Cuban community. So I guess from every person's perspective, the things they've seen are bad. And I'll be honest, I have seen some bodies on the ground in Miami, like two or three at least. So I've seen horrible things in Miami. I remember one time we were driving through Liberty City and a man walked into a store. He tried to do a robbery. The store owner got him, hit him up, and the guy was flat on the street when I showed up recording a video about that neighborhood. Now, I did record a video on scene, but then I realized, you know what? Let me not publish this video because it was just way too gruesome and there was way too many people there. It was just not the right scene to record, but I did record the video right after the thing happened and nobody bothered me. And that's the thing about Miami. Here I am. There's a body on the ground. I'm not from this neighborhood. I show up and now I'm recording this horrific scene and nobody bothered me. And that's the thing about Miami. I, if that was Memphis or Birmingham and I just showed up with a camera to record that scene without being from that neighborhood, that wouldn't go down in those cities. So, again, I respect everybody's opinion, but in my personal travels, I wish I could live in Miami. All right, guys, is there a city that I've been to that you guys think really sucks or is a dangerous place to record as a YouTuber? Please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching today's very long, drawn-out video. I hope you guys liked it and had a great time. And if I had to say which city I've had the worst things happen to me while recording, it would probably be Fort Myers. But since I'm from that area, you just are accustomed to it or you feel comfortable because it's your hometown area. Not really sure what the deal is. But if we really just had to go by number of incidents happened, 
Fort Myers has been a nightmare to record in. But again, you just feel so comfortable in your hood that when things happen that are scary, it doesn't seem to phase you at all.